from around the globe. In sold out arenas and humble churches. From out on the streets to your screen. And now, the time and what must be done. On this edition of Farrakhan Speaks. Greetings to you. I am Minister Louis Farrakhan, National Representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that great preacher of freedom, justice, and equality to the black man and woman of America and the Western Hemisphere and to the aboriginal people of the earth, the eternal leader of the nation of Islam and a warner to the government and people of the United States of America and a warner to the nations of the earth. Our subject today on the 38th edition of the time and what must be done is part two of wicked policy and America's national interest. We ended last week's broadcast discussing wicked science that is being used in the genetic engineering of foods along with social engineering through feeding the American people food that has been unnaturally ripened with color additives and other chemicals to preserve the food. We also discussed social engineering through the use of hormones, sex hormones and antibiotics to fatten cows, chickens, sheep and pigs that the American people are eating, which causes diseases in adults and in children. And it also causes early puberty but with the titillation of the sexual drive in the human being by the way sex is being advertised and promoted through all means of media it creates sexual experimentation sexual abuse child pornography and using children across the world for sexual purposes and this is going on at an extremely alarming rate. In America, generally, and in inner cities in particular, the black community has become a food desert that is filled with fast food restaurants that proliferate our community. And with this denatured and hormonally and chemically based processed foods, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in his monumental book, How to Eat to Live, Book One, he warns us of the danger of commercialized food and the need for us to take the time to properly prepare our own foods. He writes on page six, you know, as well as I, that there is a commercializing interest in those who rule the food industry. They do not worry about the lives they jeopardize so long as the dollar is safe. You might find yourself eating death if you follow them. On page seven, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad writes, take time and prepare your own foods. Do not kill yourselves by running to the store buying processed foods to eat. He said, we plan to install health food departments in our bakeries, grocery stores, and restaurants soon. In fact, he writes, the enemy is experimenting with all foods. They do not care what they eat as long as it does not kill them instantly. And then he writes, beware. For good health, 
he also writes we should raise and prepare our own food as he says in this book the enemy is a commercializing people by nature it is the almighty dollar they are after not long life and on page 10 he writes we must prepare and grow our own food because of this highly commercialized world they graft a lot of food and some of this food is not good for our stomachs also the honorable elijah muhammad in his timeless book message to the black man in america discusses the historic condition of land ownership of blacks and the actions of the enemy to discourage our desire to farm. He writes on page 37 and 38, Mr. Robert H. Kinzer and Edward Sagarin in their book, The Negro in American Business, on page 81 states, that the history of America would be different today if the slaves freed from bondage had been given in addition to the three amendments to the Constitution, the famous 40 acres and a mule. Between 1860 to 1870, the black population was 4,880,009 rounded to a 4.9 million. And if each person were granted 40 acres, it would equal 196 million acres. And remember in a previous broadcast, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we need 100 million acres for a start and 100 million acres equals the land mass that is now called California. Add to that 96 million more and add 4.9 million mules. Boy, we would be in good shape. But the slaves instead started not only without land and the money to purchase it, but with a few avenues open to earn and save money. Ownership of producing land is a prime and necessary part of freedom. A people cannot exist freely without land. And the so-called Negro in America is evidence of that fact. The slave master passed laws limiting the so-called Negro in land ownership or limiting the areas in which such purchases or even rentals could be made. Are you not left restricted to the poor sections the slave master is abandoning throughout America? Again, Mr. Kinzer and Mr. Sagarin gave a hint in their book of the great psychological strategy of the slave master on his slave. And that is the original brainwash. On page 84, the authors state that the land sold to ex-slaves was of poor quality and in an inferior location. They state that the so-called Negro faced pressure against his becoming a farm owner and pressure from the white community that he remain a tenant. We encountered credit difficulties, hardships of repayment of loans, and hardship with white executives from whom the loans had to be asked. All of this is part of the clever plan to discourage my people, Elijah Muhammad writes, from wanting to own producing land for themselves and to cause a great dislike within them for having anything to do with tilling, cultivating, extracting and producing for themselves from the land as other free and independent people do. 
it is a shame this shows you and i what white america has been and is to us and just why we have not been able to do anything worthwhile for ourselves it seems that they want us to be helpless so that they can continue to mistreat us as always we must come together and unite it is absolutely time yet with all these difficulties within 45 years after the emancipation proclamation we amassed 16 million acres of land in america particularly in the south and now given all the schemes to keep us helpless we are down to a little less than 4 million acres of land these powerful words from the honorable elijah muhammad teach us that we will never be successful economically even politically and health wise if we don't own land and begin creating from that land agri business and all types of businesses that can create jobs for our people as a foundation for the building of real wealth and this will take our people up out of the valley of poverty and want so on october 19th and 20th god willing we will be in tuskegee alabama to commemorate and celebrate the 18th anniversary of the largest gathering of men black men in the history of america and indeed in the history of the world for nearly 2 million black men came to washington dc on october 16th on a monday in 1995 it was a day that black leaders and organizations came together and agreed that we would forsake school and work on that day to gather ourselves in washington dc in the spirit of three great principles atonement reconciliation and responsibility these three words and principles and its acceptance by black organization black churches and black activists from all groups created a spirit on that day that was never seen before by black men that day gave us hope that if we could do this standing together shoulder to shoulder like soldiers in ranks for 14 straight hours and some stood even longer through the night before we could if these principles were built upon create this kind of peace tranquility love and desire for forgiveness from god and the forgiveness of each other creating a spirit of love and unity that is so basic and necessary for the type of progress that could would and must be made if we are toned and reconciled first in our families and in our communities and then accept the responsibility to make the change that we hoped others would make for us but now we recognize by our ever worsening condition that we must be the change that we are hoping and looking for that little city of tuskegee has given us as a people and even america and the world so much to be grateful for so our visit to that city is to give honor to a little city that gave to america to black people and the world so much it is for us to return or to go to a place 
where black progress economic development and high principles of civilization were advanced by dr booker t washington and those with him principles that tuskegee university was founded upon and we must revisit and ingrain those principles into our very being and teach them and pass them on to our children and unborn generations in the future. The principles upon which Dr. Booker T. Washington founded Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University, are immutable principles that any and every human being of every race, creed, or color, if these principles were followed, any people who are down and in the mud of civilization or non-productive could become producers for self and producers of a great community and become a people that produce a great civilization. Dr. Washington was interested not just in farming and agriculture and animal husbandry. He was interested in our growth into science and civilization. The manners and behavior of a civilized people. That's what he was teaching in Tuskegee Institute. He taught the reform of the black woman. He taught her how to stand and sit and how to walk. He taught her how to speak and act in public. And this is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad loved him and that institution and loved those principles and established those principles in the nation of Islam. It was those very principles that attracted the right honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, the father of black nationalist thought and pan-Africanist thought to Booker T. Washington. It is from Tuskegee that we, inshallah, God willing, will announce the details of the economic blueprint and where those nickels, dimes, and dollars that we have been saving and storing up and have gathered should be sent. And to what bank? And we are there to reaffirm our desire to use the monies that we save to first buy land and begin to grow, produce, raise, package, and distribute our own food products. This will lead to a chain of supermarkets in all the cities where we live and storage warehouses so that food can be distributed to every city. Let us look at the negative health effects of chemical and processed foods. The negative effects on the health of black people is nothing short of devastating and it could also be considered genocidal. Let's take a look. A National Cancer Institute 2013 report gives us a view of the health condition of black people. It shows black men in America lead all American men in the following cancers, colon and rectum, esophagus, kidney and renal, pelvis, liver, lung and bronchus, oral cavity and pharynx, pancreas, prostate and stomach cancer. It also shows that black women lead in all cancers, cervical, colon and rectum, kidney, liver, lung and bronchus, pancreas and stomach, except that white women have a higher incidence of breast cancer, but black women get breast cancer at a younger age, and it is more aggressive, and they suffer a higher rate of fatality. The Office of Minority Health 
of the department of health and human services has published additional health data about blacks with diabetes heart disease aids and lupus it shows black adults are twice as likely as white adults to have been diagnosed with diabetes by a physician in 2009 blacks were 2.2 times as likely as whites to die from diabetes heart disease among blacks in 2009 blacks were 30 percent more likely to die from heart disease as compared to white men black women are 1.6 times as likely as white women to have high blood pressure aids among blacks black males have almost 7.8 times the aids rate as white males black men are seven times as likely to die from hiv aids as white men black females have 23 times the aids rate as white females black women are 15 times as likely to die from hiv aids as white women black children are twice as likely to be diagnosed with hiv infection as compared to white children in 2011 african americans were 8.6 times more likely to be diagnosed with hiv infection as compared to the white population lupus is a serious health problem that mainly affects young women black women are three times more likely to develop lupus than white women why are we suffering like this unfortunately it is because our mouth is in the kitchen of our former slave masters and their children as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad warned us, he said, for good health, we must raise and prepare our own food. Is this that is happening to us genocidal? Remember last week we discussed the Genocide Convention, which stated that the crime of genocide is any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. As such, A, killing members of the group. B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, and E, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. The masses of American blacks in particular are suffering from other problems produced by genetically modified organisms. What is the definition of a genetically modified organism? From the American Heritage Medical Dictionary, it gives the definition, quote, an organism whose genetic characteristics have been altered by the insertion of a modified gene or a gene from another organism using the techniques of genetic engineering. The definition of gene is a molecular unit of heredity of a living organism. In our lessons given to us by Master Farad Muhammad, he raises the question, what is the meaning of devil? 
and mohammed answers that question it is a grafted man which is made weak and wicked or any grafted live germ from a original is devil by inserting you are grafting into a live germ or seed something that changes the nature of that seed and when you change the nature of the seed from its original state you are making what is referred to as devil once you graft from the original then you are producing that which is an opposer to the original and of the original so the moment that a genetically modified seed is taken by the wind and blown into a field of natural organic growing corn or wheat or soy it begins to destroy that field whenever you start grafting you're making an enemy of the thing that you are grafting from and also you are making an enemy to the good of the original from which it is grafted according to what we are reading there's a prevalence of genetically modified organisms according to the legal advocacy group earth justice genetically modified foods are only loosely regulated by the united states department of agriculture virtually all soybeans corn canola and sugar beets grown in the united states today are patented by monsanto or other large corporations 70 to 80 percent of all packaged foods found in supermarkets contain one or more genetically modified ingredients production of genetically modified organisms and genetically engineered crops has been performed by several major corporations companies like Syngenta, Bayer, DuPont, BASF and Dow Chemicals. These are the leading GMO producers but the Monsanto company is the largest and most dominant in the world market. Many consumer advocates, organizations and experts say that Monsanto is destroying the food supply as well as the environment. What are the dangers and risks of genetically modified organisms? A study published demonstrates the toxicity in three varieties from Monsanto. The information was prepared by the Non-GMO Project, a nonprofit organization in a 2012 document titled GM Crops, Just the Science. Are genetically modified foods safe to eat? Genetically modified foods are not properly tested for human safety before they are released to the public for sale. Genetically modified foods are not labeled in the United States and other nations where they are widely eaten and consumers are not monitored for health effects. Let us answer this question definitively. No genetically modified food is good to eat by the definition given by our Savior Allah who appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and his Messiah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Any live germ 
grafted from original is devil or enemy or opposer and any genetically modified food is an opposer and an enemy to the natural product and therefore it deprives the natural product of the natural nutrients that God put in the natural product for us to eat. Animal studies on genetically modified foods give concern and a cause for great concern. Although studies on humans have not been done, scientists are reporting a growing number of studies that examine the effects of genetically modified foods on laboratory animals. Rats fed genetically modified tomatoes develop stomach ulcerations, liver, pancreas and testes function was disturbed in mice fed GM soy. Genetically modified peas caused allergic reactions in mice. Rats fed genetically modified oilseed rapé developed enlarged livers often a sign of toxicity. Genetically modified potatoes fed to rats caused excessive growth of the lining of the gut, similar to a pre-cancerous condition. Rats fed insecticide producing GM maize or corn grew more slowly, suffered problems with liver and kidney function, and showed higher levels of certain fats in their blood. Mice showed a marked disturbance in the immune system cell populations. Mice fed with genetically modified insecticide producing corn over four generations showed a buildup of abnormal structural changes in various organs, liver, spleen, pancreas, and reduced fertility. Mice that were fed GM soya over their entire lifetime of 24 months showed more acute signs of aging in their liver. We want to add to this study because the study on humans is being done and we are the humans that are showing all the side effects of what was seen in rats and mice that were fed genetically modified foods. The question we want to ask is, what type of cooking oils are used in the inner cities in the fast food industry to fry the foods? Remember, all of this comes from a policy of government written in the National Security Study Memorandum of Henry Kissinger and the Global 2000 Depopulation Policy under President Jimmy Carter to produce in water and food and other methodologies that which would depopulate from two to three billion people from our planet. Dr. Will Allen of Growing Power makes this comment, quote, we have seen the results of our reliance on the industrialized, commoditized food system we have built since the middle of the last century. A rapidly rising rate of obesity in generation after generation leading to alarming rates of diabetes and heart disease. So that for the first time in America, despite all our advances in medicine, our life expectancy is falling, Dr. Allen said. He continues, finally, we are learning that Treating illness is much less effective than preventing illness by promoting health. 
and that good food is the best and most fundamental preventive medicine of all polls now show that eighty six percent of americans want good food real food fresh locally grown food that is safe and free of chemicals and genetic modifications but there is simply not enough good food being grown for all those who want and need it. I am simply trying to help change that, says Will Allen. Well, we are with Will Allen in trying to do just that. I would like to add that when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was among us, none of us had health insurance. Our health insurance was in this book, How to Eat to Live. And when we followed it strictly, actually among the Muslims, some Muslims never thought that we died because we had so few funerals in the nation of Islam, one man could travel the entire nation from coast to coast, from the Canadian border to the Gulf to bury our dead, but that's not so today. I think we need to go back to this book and to follow the teachings that Master Farad Muhammad gave us through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and follow it strictly and we will reverse the aging process and we will slow down our rush into the grave. Who is Monsanto? Monsanto was created in 1901. The company's first product was the artificial sweetener saccharin. And in the 1920s, Monsanto expanded into basic industrial chemicals. It is the leader in genetically modified seeds and crops. Monsanto is currently responsible for 90% of the genetically engineered seed on the United States market. Outside of genetically modified seeds, Monsanto is also the creator of the best-selling herbicide, Roundup. DuPont is another American chemical company and the world's third largest producer of chemicals, agrochemicals, polymers, safety materials, electronics, and genetically modified seeds. In 1999, DuPont became the largest seed company and producer of hybrid seeds used in production of genetically modified corn and soy. DuPont is among the top four biotech companies that produce one 100% of the genetically modified seeds and 60% of world pesticides. The Monsanto Protection Act. In March of 2013, President Obama signed into law H.R. 933, added up, it comes to six, you know what that number means, which was a congressional resolution to continue to fund the U.S. government and avoid a government shutdown. Contained in this bill is Section 735, which has been dubbed the Monsanto Protection Act. This rider added to H.R. 933 added up again, another six, allows the United States Department of Agriculture to issue permits and authorizations for the continued use of genetically engineered or genetically modified organisms, even if a court has invalidated such approval. Reuters news service in an article dated September 20th, 2013 stated the U.S. House of Representatives has taken a vote 
to extend the monsanto rider on genetically modified crops if the senate approves the new continuing resolution to fund the federal government and the president signs it into law it would keep the monsanto rider alive for eleven more weeks according to a congressional research service report dated september second twenty ten entitled agricultural biotechnology background and recent issues by tadlock cowen there are ongoing concerns about the impact of genetically engineered crops on the environment and food safety and whether u s regulations and oversight by the u s department of agriculture the food and drug administration and the environmental protection agency is adequate and this has caused many lawsuits against the u s d a for its approval of alfalfa and sugar beets in both cases the district courts found that the u s d a approval of the genetically modified organism was in adequate and ordered the u s department of agriculture to conduct an environmental impact statement but it did not stop them from producing the genetically modified seeds also in march of twenty eleven the public patent foundation filed a federal lawsuit against monsanto on behalf of the organic seed growers and trade association and other farmers and organizations totaling eighty three plaintiffs the essence of the lawsuit is stated in the first amended complaint filed in june 2011 it reads in part society stands on the precipice of forever being bound to transgenic agriculture and transgenic food coexistence between transgenic seeds and organic seed is impossible because transgenic seed contaminates and eventually overcomes organic seed in other words the grafted thing is disagreeable to live with in peace there must be separation for one will absolutely destroy the other history has already shown this as soon after transgenic seed for canola was introduced organic canola became virtually extinct as a result of transgenic seed contamination organic corn soybean cotton sugar beet and alfalfa now face the same fate as transgenic seed has been released for each of these crops also and transgenic seed is being developed for many other crops thus putting the future of all food and indeed all agriculture at stake transgenic means to introduce the genetic code of one species into another if there is no coexistence between the natural and the transgenic or the altered seed and the altered seed will destroy the natural seed then the same is also true in our race relations because race relations will continue to get worse because the government cannot provide food clothing shelter and jobs for us anymore and as we sit around waiting for somebody else to do this for us we are making our former slave masters and their children more angry with us and they are becoming completely disagreeable to live within peace and that's why we must be separated if we don't want to continue to suffer great loss this is so clear to me 
that our Savior, Master Farad Muhammad, saw all of this. So he closed the door on not just a human devil, but any live germ grafted from original is devil. So we can all say, bearing witness to the honorable Elijah Muhammad, that we are not going to be safe. We are not going to be healthy. We're not going to live long. We're not going to slow down the aging process unless we grow, raise, and prepare our own foods and save our money and buy land for farming. So the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration are working with the enemies of health and the well-being of the American people. At some point, the American people will awaken and they will rise against this and declare in their rising up that their government is no longer of by and for the American people. We must have some of this earth to grow food. It is because of wicked policies of our government that destroy the life and health of black people and the life and health of the American people and the world's people that it is necessary for our survival that we own land and begin growing our own food, not only for us, but for the American people as well. And this is also why in the inner cities, we have to come away from fast food diets because this is where our health is being destroyed. Secondly, these gardens that can be made in the inner cities those of us who have properties and land that we can apportion for growth of gardens. We have to return to Allah's command to Adam in the garden. He put man in the garden and he asked that man till and dress the land. So the seed was there, the cultivation of fruit, vegetables and flowers. It's a garden. And what is a garden without a seed? Every life that came into existence, everything that is needed to have a happy existence, a joyous existence, a healthy existence, a productive existence was already here when we were born. So people gathered seeds from what was already here, then planted orchards for the production of fruits and vegetables. So the whole idea of owning land, working land, this is how America became what it is today, a great and powerful nation. So we learn that as we tithe, to put a certain percentage of what God gives us back to the church or the mosque or the synagogue. But we also, in farming, should take a percentage of what we produce and we should use it for seed. So we never have to go to someone else to buy seeds that have been may be genetically modified. Sometimes they come and they are coated with some chemical. But no, if we keep repeating, feeding the earth with the same seed that came out of that earth, it will bring up a richer seed. Listen to the words of Allah. And the cattle, he has created them for you. You have in them warm clothing, and other advantages, and of them you eat. This is in the 16th chapter, the fifth verse. But in the sixth chapter, the 142nd verse, it reads, and of the cattle he has created, some for burden, some for slaughter. Eat of that which Allah has given you, and follow not the footsteps of the devil, for he is surely your open enemy. And surely there's a lesson for you in the cattle. We give you to drink what is in their bellies from betwixt the feces and the blood, a pure drink, agreeable to the drinkers. 
not mixed not tampered with not diluted in any form a pure drink well that's the milk that we should be drinking complete sheer and this describes the color of it clear or light that's good because milk is a pure food and you know what if you love god you have to start with how we feel about our creator this wonderful gift that he gave us of the cow wouldn't you want to treat the cow right to show your love and respect for god and this marvelous gift so would you feed the cow what America is feeding cows today? That's why you can't drink raw milk from these improperly fed and nurtured cows. But if you love God, you feed the cow what the cow naturally eats to provide this pure drink agreeable to the drinkers. What is the value of a cow? And why is the second and longest chapter in the Holy Quran entitled the cow? What is the significance of such? That after the opening prayer, Al-Fatiha, seven oft-repeated verses, the first chapter you meet is called Al-Baqarah, the cow. Is there some value in a cow for us? This chapter has 286 verses. And when you add the numbers together, you get 16, and 6 and 1 is 7. And this is a number that represents completion, perfection. Well, this surah in the Quran is really a breakdown of all of the Quran in one chapter, and then it fills it out in 112 more. Milk is a complete food and the honorable elijah muhammad said with the bean soup and good clean milk and whole wheat bread with just that we could live 140 years the honorable elijah muhammad writes in how to eat to live and eat only the right foods he said milk bread navy beans would lengthen our lives to 140 years the wise industrialists and those in the medical profession should certainly know how valuable this animal is and its many advantages the level of economic activity and technology generated by the cow is staggering from its milk hide blood brain intestines hooves fat pancreas, ovaries, bones, and even manure, hundreds of products are produced. So if there's that kind of value in the cow, shouldn't we treat it as a gift from God? We must feed it properly in order for the milk from it to be a pure drink agreeable to the drinker. But if we have fed it poison, now you have to boil it and all of the value of it comes out in the boiling and then give it back to the people denatured when the god of nature has made the cow to give us a pure drink if we just took care of the cow and fed the cow like we respected it for what it is a gift from the beneficent god we would be blessed by god and blessed by that cow Everything he gave us, he gave it to us to be its master. He gave it to us as a gift to learn its value because in it is a lesson for us. In the Quran, he says, the cow, they carry your burden. Some are for food. Parts of it are for clothing. In the Bible, Samson referred to his woman as a heifer he said quote if you had not plowed with my heifer 
you would not have learned the secret of my riddle a heifer according to the dictionary is a young female cow that has not yet given birth samson is likening a woman to this marvelous gift of god and all the things that you can find in a cow that makes a cow so valuable oh you can find so much more in our females the prophet muhammad said heaven lies at the foot of mother and the honorable elijah muhammad said the only heaven for a man is found in a woman we must learn to love the gift of the cow and love the gift of the female because she is our earth and produces so much good for us if she's treated properly if she is handled properly if she is taught and guided properly and that's why the honorable elijah muhammad set up a marvelous class for women where they are taught the basics of how to be that good woman that is a good mother of a children knowing how to rear those children how to take care of her husband how to act at home and abroad how to cook and be our first teacher and our first nurse so i would like all the sisters and the classes to open your class up on Saturday and go out and invite our sisters and let's open up the FOI on Monday and invite our men to these classes because these classes will make us the type of man the type of woman that will make us fall deeply in love with each other thank you so much for listening and next week God willing, we will discuss the inability of the transgenic and the natural to abide together and the inability of the grafted human and the natural man to have peace and why separation is the answer to the race problem presented by the black man and woman of America on the time and what must be done i greet you in peace assalam alaikum please log on again next week and every week this year for the time and what must be done tell your friends tell your family log on to noi.org every saturday 6 p.m central time for truth guidance, and unequaled love from the National Representative of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Pass on the word every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time at NOI.org. The time and what must be done. Remember, to have Minister Farrakhan answer your questions, tweet them to at Louis Farrakhan, hashtag Ask Farrakhan. And to add this message to your library, or as a gift for someone you love, go to store.finalcall.com.